Um, I'm going to create a new project file. So <coughs> um, here is the name of the file. Um, select the folder where you, you would like to store it. Um, make sure that this is a sysml project. So I'm going to search for sysml project and make sure that you have the, the basic Unix library also imported in. wait okay so now we will recreate the same uh, model atm system model that we uh, built in class so the first thing i uh, would do is i'll create a block definition diagram where i will define my uh, blocks which are you know, system blocks components of that system and any constraint blocks that i we may have to add here is the ATM block. I'm going to add two parts in this ATM system. One would be the computing unit, and the other one would be the display unit. I just call it display. Next thing we are going to do is just to add some value properties. So we have a value property of the ATM machine, this is the total weight. So let's just call it weight. Uh, we would like to <coughs> assign it some units, appropriate units. So uh, let's search for kilogram mass. And all I've done is just simply press the control and space bar to filter out all the units we have defined in our uh, library. So here is the one that I want. Uh, we'll do the same thing with others. Uh, this time I'm going to create a value property for the computing unit. We'll call it weight of CPU, let's say. And we will do the same. Kilogram mass unit, which is here. Similarly, for the weight of our display. the space bar and there we have it. now if you want you can assign uh, default values to uh, these value properties or some of these value properties if you already know what the you know the default uh, value would be of these components if not you can assign them runtime um, manually or you may have some other way of assigning those values when you start simulating <coughs> or creating instances for, for the system and its constituent blocks. So the next thing we are going to do is to see if we can add a few uh, uh, constraint blocks and these constraint blocks will allow us to uh, connect some of these value properties together. So the idea over here is that the, uh, the total weight of ATM uh, system would be the sum of the weights of its parts. In our example, uh, these are the, the computing unit and the display unit. So let's see if we can bring in a uh, constraint block which would capture uh, uh, this calculation. So let's just call it, you know, a weight calculation block. Weight cal, and this will have an equation with some parameters. So the equation that we wish to um, have here is something which actually cal calculates the sum of two things. Let's just call it T is equal to X plus Y. And that X plus Y and T are the parameters of this uh, equation. So that's what we'll be adding next. So we have uh, capital T. Uh, for our calculation purposes, we know that these are real valued parameters so we'll simply call you know give them names exactly matching with our uh, variables in our expression and equation and all i'm doing is i'm simply i know that there is this real uh, data type that already exists otherwise you can you know search it and then uh, put those uh, types so here we have make sure that i know uh, these parameters exactly match with the uh, variables that we have used in our expressions uh, both on the left and the right hand side of this equation <coughs> so 
So what we have done is we have simply created a, a, a typical frame block. Um, it's kind of a functional block that allows us to add two numbers together and you know return that value and that value can be stored somewhere else. Um, but at this point it has no relationship with this ATM uh, block over here. So we would like to create let's say that relationship. So now we are saying that this ATM uh, has now uh, you know this this uh, calculation as one of its constraint properties which means that now it has access to this uh, you know calculation and we can perform this calculation as part of a parametric diagram and if you have simulation in engine uh, working you can actually you know see the, the calculations performed when you simulate it <clears throat> now since we are here we may also like to have a constraint it's a slightly different kind of a constraint where we may be checking if this total weight is less than some desired value so that may be a requirement for this system so let's just add that constraint block right away uh, let's add this constraint block and again these are definitions of those um, calculations that uh, our ATM machine or ATM system can can uh, use uh, but they are general purpose functional blocks can be used by any other block if a similar calculation is required so let me just call it uh, max weight limit and we are going to have a constraint over here which let's say weight should be less than or equal to uh, let's have some number 15 and since we are using this wt as a uh, variable in this expression we would like to add that as a parameter here and we also would like to assign what uh, type So now we have another uh, constraint. We'll do the same thing. We will also use this constraint with our ATM block. Let's just keep things as a brief separate. So the idea over here is that we would like to now have a parametric diagram where we will uh, bring in these values, uh, bring our constraint, connect all of uh, those things in a way where the computing units weight and the display uh, units weight would be added together to calculate the weight of the ATM machine and then we will again check uh, the total weight that we have just calculated against this constraint which says that this thing should be less than or equal to 50 and that's all you know how we would do in this session so let me now uh, show you how the uh, parametric diagram will be constructed from this uh, definition that we have in our uh, block definition diagram over here so we will do a create diagram right click create diagram and do a PSML parametric diagram and that's where it's going to ask us what are the things that you would like to have on your uh, diagram and we would like to see all our constraints here are the you know the, the, I'm starting from the bottom so here is this small C tells us that this is we have this uh, constraint we would like to see all its parameters also on the diagram. Uh, the other constraint over here, max weight limit, we would also like to see its <coughs> parameter displayed on the diagram. We have the, the weight value property of the ATM block, which is already checked. We would also like to see the display unit with its uh, value property, which has the, the weight in it. There are other value properties defined. You may see a list of all those things in here. We don't need all of them for our weight calculations. Therefore, we will only check the, the, the appropriate value property. So, in this example, we have almost everything uh, checked here. And we say OK. Now we have all our constraints, which are shown with these uh, blue grayish uh, uh, blocks. Uh, we have our components, the display, and the, comp uh, the computing units also. Uh, available here with their value properties embedded inside so let's just keep the inputs on the left hand side and the outputs on the right hand side so we have the calculation block here uh, with its x y input parameters and the t we'll just take it to the right hand side so i can also enlarge it then we will have the capital T will go into the, the value property of our ATM block. And that's the, the value property of the ATM block. And once we have calculated that, we would like to 
traffic to our constraint that will check if it's less than or greater than 50. The next thing is we are going to connect. So we are saying take this uh, rate of CQ, uh, equate it to X, take the value of this display weight and equate it to the Y parameter in our constraint block. When it completes the calculation, puts that value on T, give it to the weight of our ATM block and then take this calculated value and pass it to the WT parameter of our next constraint, which will simply check it against you know this, this 15 or whatever threshold value you have selected over here. That's it. And once we uh, go back, or we can simulate it here, uh, we can also go back to our ATM machine, and select it, and run the simulation. And here is the button. Uh, you can also do it by right clicking on it and then run simulations. Uh, but let's just use the, the play button at the top. And here we have the runtime instances created, objects created, so you know, all the things that we have in our uh, design or you know, parts of ATM. Uh, we see that there is this display uh, value property that's assigned some value to it. Let's say it's 10. We have the CQ that's assigned some random value, let's say 20. And just hit return and you see the, the rate of the ATM is calculated by adding those two values 10 and 20 it comes out to be 30. Uh, the reason we are seeing these uh, red colors because our uh, constraint was violated the max limit uh, here it is so you see it, it, this constraint was violated therefore it shows the value which it, you know violates that constraint and it is shown over here. Now this is a runtime instance that we have just created. We can also save it. So uh, what I will do is uh, I may go up here uh, in my containment tree of my model, create a new package where I'll store all the instances. So I'll call it instances and start storing these instances over here. So I'll just uh, uh, make sure that you have ATM selected first. Otherwise, whatever object that you have selected, the instance will be created just for that. For ATM, we would like to have the entire, uh, you know, all the ATM parts uh, with their value properties stored in, in this instance. Uh, we are going to tell it, store everything in this instance. And here is, you know, one instance which has been uh, stored over there. Let's run it one more time so that we have one more instance. So I'm running, running it again. And this time again, I'll, I'll, I'll assign some values to the rate properties of the CPU. This time I'm going to give it, let's say, four here. And the display has five value. And this time we see that the constraint was not violated because the sum of these two uh, numbers is, is less than 50. And we will again go back, select ATM, and store one more instance in here. And that's it. Uh, at this time, we do not need any more simulations, so I can close my simulation layout, stop the simulations, and show you where those simulation instances are stored. So here we have those simulation instances with all the details. Uh, we can also display these instances with the help of uh, a different kind of a diagram that is called instance table. So let me search that instance table. And when we click on that, here is the instance table. All we have to do is to simply drag and drop one of the instances over here for it to uh, know what to display. And we may also add a few more columns so that we can see the information that we are interested in displaying here. So we would like to see the, the weight of display unit. We would also like to see the display of computing unit. So I'm just checking all those things which will become columns. And I would also like to have my max weight limit uh, so it will tell me whether it's, uh, you know, the instance fails that constraint or not. Um, I don't think I need anything else. And here we have all that information. We can rearrange the columns. So here, let me take the cons constraint verdict all the way to the end. So now we have an instance which has a 20 kg of uh, CQ and a 10 kg of the display. The sum of these two, 30 kg for the entire system and we see also the verdict of our constraint that is created. I can also now drag the other instance in here 
and you see that this is the second instance we stored. We can also create uh, empty instances over here. So if I say create with parts, it creates an empty instance which I can manually uh, initialize. So let, let me see if I can put some value in here. So I say seven here, I'll put let's say uh, five again here. Um, if these are just things that have added to those value properties, I need to evaluate it. So I selected the entire uh, row here, went up here and says, I would say evaluate selected row. And that's how it will run the simulation in the background and will calculate you know, the constraints. And if there is a constraint like a max weight limit, it's going to tell us whether it failed or, or, or it passes the, the, the requirement. So now you have a, an instance table that we can also you know, um, display with all the instances that we may have created either during uh, runtime or by adding you know these we can also read uh, these instances from external files and then evaluate them uh, using our parameter map. So let me go back and just uh, conclude what we have done so far. So remember we had this initial uh, log definition diagram. I'll also put this BDB over here so that we know uh, where that uh, that was publicating on it. Uh, it's also up here tab so I can open it from there as well and what I will do is I will uh, just for the sake of having a, a, a you know an overall view of what we have done so far I'm going to find my uh, the parameter diagram which is owned by the ATM so you will find it uh, inside ATM uh, blocks and all the parts and the relationships it has uh, I'll simply drag and drop this thing up here from that and now we have a view of what is in this diagram I'll just make sure it's located here so that we can also resize it so this is not the actual diagram it's just a, a, a picture of that diagram a screenshot the next thing I would like to do is to also bring in the instance table that we have just created so I'll also put it here and here we can have the instance tables and that's it so this is the overall view um, let me go back to the instance table one more time and also show you the legend that we, we can also use so if we say apply legends it's going to show you the legends which you may have created or they may already be there so I'm just selecting the verification status say okay and now you have these two colors that would identify uh, those instances which you know either failed or passed so everything that you see with red is that instance which failed one or some of the constraints and the green ones are the, you know the, those instances which passed so we go back to our table and we see uh, fail and pass is still there you may refresh it and the color will show that's it so uh, that's about it that's that's the the first uh, pass as our model that we did the next thing uh, we uh, would do is is to uh, create a user interface and have all some of the, that information displayed on that user interface